Tomorrow marks the first anniversary of the powerful earthquake and tsunami in Japan. It killed nearly 16,000 people and triggered the nuclear disaster in Fukushima. In one small town to the northeast of the meltdown, the medical crisis is far from over. Bill Whitaker is there. Japan has so much rebuilding to do, the big picture so daunting, it's easy to overlook a little place like Moriyoshi Hospital. How do you run a hospital like this? Well, <laughs> that's a very good question. <laughs> Dr. Kentaro Hayashi runs this rural hospital with a rotating staff of one or two volunteer doctors, seeing 80 or more patients a day in a facility that almost was washed away in the tsunami. You can still see the wave wash through here at about this level. A year later, this hospital still has no central heat. The electricity is jerry-rigged. And look here, these are the hospital records still covered in mud. They have no staff and no time to file them away. The original staff of two doctors were overwhelmed by the tsunami. They couldn't handle the stress of the patient load and left. The hospital got through the immediate crisis with the help of volunteers from the U.S., like Kozue Shimabukuro. The Japanese native is a pediatrician at UCLA. I just remember feeling so hopeless. It's like, uh, now we are here, and then what am I supposed to do? Dr. Hayashi feels the same. Now the foreign volunteers have gone. How is it possible in Japan, wealthy Japan, that you can have a situation like this? Well, it's also not only in Japan, I think. Like rural hospitals in the U.S., it's hard to get doctors to move here. Throughout the disaster zone, there's just one doctor for every 700 people. So Dr. Hayashi recruits volunteers by way of the Internet for a day or a week. He used to volunteer for Doctors Without Borders in Burma and Nigeria. How did this compare? I think that's why I can work in this condition, because of those experience. For now, he runs the hospital on $350,000 donated by the Japan Society of the U.S. The Japanese government promises to fix the ailing facility. And when is that supposed to happen? One more year. So you have to live like this for another year? I hope not. With the Japanese government focused on bigger issues, little places like Motoyoshi are falling through the cracks. Bill Whitaker, CBS News, Motoyoshi, Japan.